prior to the election, I put out a video uh, basically saying that President Donald Trump um, was going through court cases and problems because he took the glory to himself for the success of the previous term and how God will allow us to go through issues to humble ourselves. Then after the, uh, the assassination attempt, President Trump said that he lives every breath by God's grace. Every breath by God's grace. And there was a turning. I'm not saying that he's completely perfect or anything, but there was a humbling. So I put out another video saying that through his humility, you see the spiritual realm with the heart, through his humility, he had positioned himself for promotion. So when you humble yourself and God promotes you, it may affect the world, it may affect your family, your friends, it affects people. And so uh, we know that he was elected, so it's God who places people in position. Now I want to talk about when, when the election happened and the Republicans won uh, basically from east to west, right across, what the people of the United States did was they voted for a man who stood pro-life. They voted against, in so doing, they voted against abortion. In so doing, they voted for righteousness. Now, when, when they did that, there was a spiritual shift, not only in the United States, but it affected the whole world. Because righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach. So in voting for righteousness, the spiritual state of the United States has changed. And this will be like domino effect around the world because, because God will exalt the United States. What happens when God exalts is I believe, because when you look at the spiritual realm, like when someone comes to prayer, for prayer, I'm, I'm seeking to look at the spiritual realm around that person. Sometimes there's darkness, sometimes there's demons, sometimes there's a brilliant light of God's glory. It'll affect, righteousness affects the spiritual realm of the United States. So I anticipate in the next four years a period of peace and prosperity over the United States. That unemployment will come down, that people will become prospered. And the onus on President Trump and the government is to reign, to rule, to govern in righteousness, to appoint governors, to appoint justices who will bring in justice and righteousness, that righteousness will govern. The difficulty and challenge when you go into prosperity is that Christians become slack and that churches become carnal because there's finances and, and so on. So as God blesses the nation with wealth and peace, the people of God need to be on their knees seeking him, crying out to him. Because if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then I will hear from heaven. 
So, as Yong Yi Cho once wrote to me when I'd written to him, he said, the reason why revival begins is prayer. The reason why it stops is people stop praying. Part of the reason why we have seen such a change and shift in the political landscape is because of prayer. Remember the Jesus Revolution, the 1960s, where young people were on drugs and free sex and, and all of this going, going on, and my older brother was part of, of that whole generation. Mums and dads got on their knees and prayed and cried out to God for their children, and there was an almighty sweeping of the landscape of revival. And my brother today, who was into drugs and so on today, is a pastor. And there are many people like that. So we have seen a sweep of the landscape because of prayer. And for this to continue, God's people will have to continue to pray, to press in. The powers of darkness are in complete disarray and confusion, how this could happen. So we continue in prayer, and the churches need to preach righteousness and justice. Now I want to show a video clip to highlight how evil abortion is how evil it is in this video uh, of a man uh, a, a man of integrity and godliness his name is apostle john chi from cameroon the holy spirit locates a lady who had done abortion and watch this video it will show you how evil abortion is come here come you come I'm seeing darkness over you. Yes, sir. You have done something to yourself. And you have done something that is bad. It's true, sir. And you have taken the life of a baby. Yes, sir. There's blood in your hand. When I say blood, you have taken the life of your own baby. I've aborted the pregnancy for two months. You did an abortion. Yes, sir. Voilà, la chaîne qu'elle porte come here. est un serpent. The might of Jesus Christ. Come here, come here, come here. Come here. There is a massive people. The might of Jesus Christ. Ah! Hey! Ah! Come out of her. Your party will take her away from me. Jesus Christ will take her away no. from you. No. I want to change you. Yes. They are being destroyed. They are just being destroyed. Fire! Being destroyed. Just fire! Fire! My body, please. Fire! Please, fire! Fire! Please, please, I'll go, I'll go. Fire in the name of Jesus! Yeah. Christ. I'll go. I have a lot to do. Now go! The massive revolution of power. Bye bye! bye, -bye. Confess! Confess! I've made her family not to send this girl to school. Uh -huh. This girl will never go to school. Uh -huh. I've made her mother to hate this girl. All of make her family to hate this girl. Nobody in her family loves the girl. Yes, I do that. Yes. And what other evil have you caused her to do? Mm. The girl, he will never know how to read or write. He will never get married. Yes. Who says so? I'm the one. You are I'm the one. one. I'm the one of I'm the one that caused her to abort the baby. Okay, you are the one. I'm the one. Okay. Yes. Your end has come. Yes. From this day forward, you will never have access to this body again. In the name of Jesus Christ. Just with you. Thank you, Lord. Look at the reaction. Thank you, Lord. Bye bye. And down she goes. So. Prophecy comes from heaven. Prophecy said you have done something very bad, something evil. You have taken the life of a baby. And it was the demon that incited the woman to kill her own baby. The Democratic Party, in pushing abortion as women's rights and women's health, it is pure demonic activity. 
it is evil. Killing thousands and thousands of babies with the election of righteousness, this nation will come into blessing. God will exalt this nation. Hallelujah. I think Steve was going to say something. Are you going to say something, Steve? Yeah, we, we were just talking about this um, at lunch today. About, <clears throat> I think there's a fundamental lack of understanding with the public about the, the political realm as it relates to the spiritual realm. As, as believers in Christ, we are called to walk according to the spirit and not according to the flesh. And, and what you see at every political season, we just came through one, and we're on the other side of it now, praise God. But um, every political season, you see um, all accusation, and it's about, it's about personalities and words spoken and things done in the past, and it's blaming. But to walk in the Spirit is to look past the words and to look past the personalities and see the platforms that are being presented. Amen? And on the platforms are two spiritual positions— one that is a position that exalts freedom, it exalts um, uh, personal, you know, financial independence, it exalts um, our constitution, which is based on biblical Christianity, and the other side um, exalts the things that the Bible specifically speaks against as perversion and abomination. Um, one that, that comes to mind in particular is, is um, pride. You know, the exaltation of pride is, it, it puts you in a position against God where, it, like as if you are two magnets. You know, when magnets are pushed together and they're facing the wrong direction, they repel. They don't, that not only will they not stick, but they, they repel away from each other. But when you flip it around and turn it the right way, it sticks. And the Bible says that God comes near the humble and he resists the proud. And yet we have a political party that exalts pride. Pride in what the Bible calls an abomination, right? Amen. So the um, pastor was talking about abortion in, in this specific context. Um, it was amazing to me to see the Democrat National Convention this year have a bus parked outside of the event giving away free abortions. This could not possibly be seen by any thinking person as a physical act. It was, it was an altar. It was a spiritual altar sacrificing children. So it was amazing to me to, to see not only this happen, but you know, ignored in our media largely. But the, the point that I wanted to share really is see through the eyes of the Bible I'm reminded if you've ever played board games with your family, you know, sometimes you play a, um, like a trivia game or something, and the card that has the answers is all blurred out, but you slide it into this reader, like, like uh, sometimes it's a red reader, and you, you slide it in, and when it's in this colored reader, you can read the words. When you're looking at it outside, you can't, you can't see it. It's blurry. But when you put it in this reader, you can see the answers. And when you use... God's word as your reader, when you're, when you're using God's word to decipher what's going on in news and politics and world events and so forth, you can see things that the unbelieving world doesn't see. Amen? And that is the gift from God that we're given this discernment through our, our, our secret decoder. <laughs> Amen? So we look through the eyes of the holy word of God to see what's actually going on. Um, very often, in fact, most of the times, the way it's presented is not the reality of what's going on. What's happening in the spirit is what's going on. And if you are undiscerning in the spirit, you wouldn't know that, right? So we know that by getting into the word, uh, meditating on the word, being in prayer, and being in communion with the Lord, and seeing the world around us through that lens. Amen? That's all. Amen. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. So, righteousness exalts a nation. So, what will, exalt, what will cause you to be exalted by God is righteousness. So, we're drawing a parallel between what has happened in the political realm, but in your personal life. If you'll humble yourself 
Turn from sin. Turn from ungodliness. Turn from the trash that's on devices, on your phone, on your tablet, on YouTube, on, you know, and so on. If you will turn to Christ, who is truth, and recognize the deception of sin. Because Satan always has a justification of sin. If you'll turn from that and recognize the truth, then God will promote you. Stay on your knees, so to speak. Stay humble, and he will bless you. And when he blesses you, return the glory to him. You know, live a life of gratefulness to God. I'm grateful, Lord, that I breathe. I'm grateful, Lord, for your prosperity, for your blessing. Don't, when he blesses you with things or whatever it is, then keep close to him. Don't get caught up with the blessing. The blessing is just because he loves you, but don't let it take you from him. Amen. That's always a temptation. But righteousness will exalt your life. You know, after humility, God exalts the humble. He'll bring you up. Hallelujah. So we thank God for the nation. Father, let's pray. Let's all stand and pray for the United States. Praise God. Veronica, you want to come and pray for the United States? Come on, sister. So Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you have orchestrated throughout this election and and for this nation that was built on godly principles, Father. We pray for revival in the United States of America, Father. We pray that you would continue to cover and protect not only Donald Trump, but his family, Barron, Melania, his other children, Lord. We pray that you would protect um, Vice President J.D. Vance and his family, all of those in the House of Representatives, Father, every leader over this nation, everyone representing the, the education system, everyone that's over our children, Father, we pray that this nation would turn back to you. We, we prophesy that this nation will turn back to you and that we will see a great revival. And Father, we thank you for it in advance. In Jesus' name, amen. Father God, we pray, everyone pray. We pray, Lord, against wickedness in high places. We pray, Father, we, we come against the principalities and powers that have brought, Lord, defilement, pollution, sexual pollution to this land, Lord, wastage, corruption, Father. We come against it, Lord. Lord, the, the pornography industry, we come against it, Lord. Father God, the trafficking of children, the whole sex trade industry, we come against it, Father. Wash this nation with the blood of Jesus. Wash this nation with the blood of Jesus. Father, we pray against abortion, Lord. We pray, Lord God, that you would, Lord, put into government, Lord, people of righteousness, righteous laws, Lord, against abortion, Lord, that, Lord, that you'd raise up, Lord, people of righteousness. Righteousness will exalt this nation, we pray. We ask, Lord, we pray for the churches that they'll humble themselves and pray and seek your face, that pastors and leaders would preach righteousness, Lord, that you would send your Holy Spirit and conviction, Lord, of sin upon the people of God, that people would walk into their churches and bow their head in repentance, weep over their sins and come out born again and transformed, Lord. We pray, Father, against religion in the churches, Father. Father. We pray, Father God, that there'd be a quickening of the Holy Spirit, Lord. People be filled with the Holy Spirit. Lord, as you did in Brownsville, do it all over the United States, we pray. In Jesus' name we ask. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Joy.